Sharp Short Stories Neighbours Tim Collins, as his name might suggest, was nice, normal and harmless. The old cliché was made for young Tim. He was just the sort of boy you'd like your daughter to bring home. He wasn't on any dating sites, as he was wary of websites sharing his data, but if he was, his profile might read Age 23 Occupation Trainee accountant at fourth largest accounting firm in Britain Likes Cycling, long walks and watching golf Looking for a down-to-earth lady of similar income, age and interests he had picked out a delightful cottage in a quaint little village just 45 minutes away from his office in the city centre. The cottage was ideal for Tim, as it was large enough for him to feel free and relaxed, yet small enough to easily clean. The village was ideal for Tim, as it was close enough to the centre for him to easily commute, yet far enough to avoid pollution, traffic and people on lower incomes who tended to be noisier than those in his pay grade. There were only five houses on the country road, his and four others, and the estate agent assured him that most of the residents were over the age of 60. Perfect. Moving day went swimmingly. Tim didn't have many belongings at all, just a few neatly arranged outfits for each of the seasons packed tightly into two suitcases and some electrical equipment such as a laptop, lamp, TV and whatnot. He paid £50 to hire a van for an hour no more as he'd incur a fee, and returned it without a scratch. Rather than fork out £6 for a taxi, he walked for an hour down the motorway and back to his new home. As he approached the door, the curtains twitched all up and down the street. He thought it a bit odd, and rude perhaps, that his neighbours would look at their new neighbour through their windows and not come out to welcome him but he explained it away by thinking that they didn't want to overwhelm him on his first day in his new house. That evening, Tim unpacked his things and ironed five shirts ready for the week ahead. He sat down and found some sport on a television, today's horse racing, and settled down with a contented sigh. Before long, he felt very tired from the day's activity and felt his eyes starting to close. He sat up straight in an attempt to wake up and put the remote on the armrest. He then put his elbow on the armrest and rested his face on his hand. His eyes closed again and he shuffled to get comfy, but as he fell asleep his elbow moved on top of the remote and changed the channel. He shuffled again and turned up the volume. He shuffled again and turned the volume up even more, and then a bit more, and then a lot more, until it was at the maximum. He shuffled again and knocked the remote off the armrest and onto the floor, but he was now in so deep a sleep that neither the blaring volume of the TV nor the loud crack of the remote falling could wake him. Unfortunately, the TV was very loud and could be heard next door. And even more unfortunately, the channel was no longer showing horse racing. It was showing a rather inappropriate film best not heard by your next door neighbour. Days after that got no better. It seemed every day when he left for work, Tim would step in dog mess that just happened to be right outside his front door. He then carefully checked to avoid it until he stepped in it when he was just outside his car. One day he stepped in dog mess outside his car, walked back to his house to polish his shoes, stepped out of his house and stepped in dog mess again on the front step. How was that even possible? Every evening when he came home from work, he'd see the four old women who lived on his road huddled round gossiping. His next door neighbour seemed to be the leader of the group. As soon as they saw him, they'd dart inside and the curtains would twitch. As soon as he stepped inside his house, they would come back out and start cackling so loudly he couldn't hear the telly. He looked at the four old women through his window. They stood in a circle, their backs hunched over like vultures, and their curly white bushy hair was so close to each other's it looked like some sort of feathered animal shaking and pulsating with each cruel laugh. On Tim's narrow country road there was no pavement and just enough room for the four residents to park their cars outside their houses. This was very convenient until his next door neighbour, which number one as Tim had named her, bought a second car for no apparent reason. 
and parked it outside Tim's while he's, he was at work. It meant Tim now had to drive past his house and two fields to park it in the nearest village, 20 minutes walk away. It meant he had to walk home down a narrow muddy country lane with no pavement, through the wind and the rain, with leaves brushing his hair and twigs poking his face. He felt he had hit rock bottom, until he stepped in another dog turd on his doorstep, at which point he knew he'd hit rock bottom. He sat at home in despair. It was his first house and it had seemed so perfect, but now we didn't know how he could possibly stay there. But how could he leave? It would mean finding a new place, finding a buyer, estate agents, mortgage brokers, solicitors, thousands and thousands of pounds. No, enough of this, he thought to himself. After a little cry and a lot of self-pity, Tim pulled himself together. He'd had enough. He was a man on the edge. He would take no more. He had to fight back. There was only one thing to be done, so he gathered all his courage and wrote a polite email to the council. Unfortunately, this did nothing to change the witch's behaviour. Dog mess was planted, curtains were twitched, passive aggressive looks were maintained, mocking cackling persisted and the pointless second car remained. Running out of options, Tim decided to confront witch number one, numero uno, the head honcho, and try to politely persuade her to move her car and ask her and her friends to be more careful with their dog's deposits. He summoned the courage the next evening to knock on her door. It was a cold, dark evening. The wind howled and the rain came down brutally and flooded the street. He stood outside getting soaked and timidly knocked on the door. She opened it very slightly so he could just see one eye. One evil eye that made his blood run cold. One evil, unnatural eye, like that of a raptor from Jurassic Park. Do you have a minute? said Tim. Not really. I'm about to take the dinner up, said witch number one with a snarl. It's just I feel maybe we got off on the wrong foot. I feel like maybe you're not happy with me being here, and I just wanted to know why. The witch's reptilian raptor eye narrowed and zoomed in on his with fierce indignance. The wind blew savagely and knocked him off balance, while a river of rain rushed at his feet and he started to slide. As I was saying, Tim had to shout now because the wind was loud and I just get the impression that Tim was standing at a 45 degree angle now because the wind was blowing him off balance and Maybe I've done something to offend you. And Tim was really shouting now because the wind was even louder. And I thought I'd come and ask you if there was anything. Tim ran onto the wall now because the wind was really blowing him off balance. And I can do to resolve the situation. And Tim slipped and fell into the door, which slammed into the old woman's face. Tim got up off the floor. Tim peered through the gap between door and door frame. Tim saw the old woman lying on her back, unconscious. Three days later, Tim placed the final box in the back of the removals van. He'd been bullied into leaving his perfect cottage by the four old ladies, as well as arrested by the police for assault. Fortunately, there was not enough evidence to charge him. Three months later, on a warm Friday evening, Tim stood on the balcony of a city centre apartment watching the cars, as small as ants, crawl and beep down the ring road. He looked across at the block of flats opposite his as people his age played music, danced, chatted, drank and laughed. He looked at the river in the distance and the beautiful burnt orange sky becoming red as a sunset. And then he looked to his left at the attractive young woman standing next to him, who hated cycling and golf, and whose income was significantly less than his. Tim learned a lot that day. He'd learned not to judge people on how much money they had. He'd learned not to judge people by their appearances. And he'd learned that little old ladies are...
Glossary. Cliche, something that people say way too much. For example, it's not winning, but taking part that counts. Wary, not trusting someone or something. Accounting firm, company which takes care of people's money. Indignant, angry because you think you're being treated unfairly. Quaint, pretty in an old fashioned way. Comprehension questions. What is Tim's priority when looking for a girlfriend? Two, why was the cottage perfect for Tim? Three, what horrible thing kept happening to Tim? Four, what did he accidentally do to the old woman who lived next door? Five, how was Tim different at the end of the story compared to the start? Language and structure. Can you find any examples of foreshadowing? Two, the old women are compared to vultures. What are some connotations of vultures? Three, can you find any examples of listing? Why has the writer chosen to use this? Four, a lot of ellipsis is used when Tim tries to talk to his neighbor. Why has the writer chosen to do this? Five, how is the old woman's eye described? What's the effect of this? If you like neighbors, Read The Man from the South by Roald Dahl.